Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you're tuned back in today. You might have seen my previous video where I was talking about the books that I read in the month of May. May was a really big month for reading for me because quarantine for one, but it also opened up my eyes to the fact that I have so many books in my apartment that I have read, don't really wanna read ever again, or could really use another home. And so today I'm doing something that might be a little alarming. Yeah, um, we're going through all the books I have in my house today. Yeah, I wanna try myself inside the jewels. Yeah, you know I keep on running from the truth. And I drive around on filling up. Okay, so I have needed to do this for a while. As you can tell, I am 23 years old and I have collected a lot of books in the last three years that I've been an avid reader. And when Nathan and I got married, we just also combined everything in our collections. And so for a while, I've been needing to go through this pile and I've just been putting it off, but today I'm gonna do it. No, please stop. Stop applauding. It's, it's just all in a day's work. I am a very passionate person about minimalism and living a minimalist lifestyle. I think that objects and clutter really contribute to fogging your vision and your clarity of mind. I think it's really important to constantly do a reevaluation of your space so that you can have more mental clarity and just feel a little bit more at peace in your own home because you are not drowning in clutter. And a lot of the books that have been sitting on my shelf I've not read in years or I've read once and honestly don't think I'll ever read again or we've gotten from family members or hand-me-downs and honestly don't know what we will ever do with those books um i don't even know where this came from so today i'm going to be sorting these all into piles and i'm going to explain to you my process so that you can feel encouraged to do this yourself and not feel overwhelmed because right now oh i'm feeling a little stressed out but i love to organize and i love to clean so this is going to be a party to help me accomplish this giant task, I've got some supplies that I think would really help you too as well. First, you are just going to need some post-it notes. I got some really pretty pastel colors from on Amazon. I love to use these to help me organize all of these messy piles and have some fun and pretty aesthetics as well. Next, you're going to need some pens to help you label your post-it notes. I got this beautiful pack of like adult gel pens on Amazon. A lot of people on TikTok had been talking about them and I went ahead and ordered them. This is the brand on the side and I'm obsessed with them. I use them all the time so today we're using those fun guys sorry downstairs neighbors I'm also pumping some clarity essential oil in my diffuser to make sure I stay focused and on task as well as some northern lights black spruce and peppermint and finally you're just gonna need a space to be able to lay out all of your books at once in multiple different piles so in mine and Nathan's apartments we like to store our books in a couple different spaces we are lucky enough that we have some built-in shelves by our TV we also have a little coffee table with some bookends in our bedroom where I like to keep everything that's in the queue that I'm about to read or I've just finished reading and then we also have some bookshelves around the house where I like to use my books as decoration because what's more beautiful than a bunch of pages full of knowledge and beauty and just kidding. <laughs> um, so when it comes to organizing the different sections of my books, first I am going to create a category of books I'm currently reading, books for Nathan to go through later, books to give away, and then books that I think I want to loan to friends that I think they'd really enjoy. And ready or not, I'm going to go through every single book in this pile to help you figure out which books you might like, which books you might not like, which books you might want to give away, and which books you should definitely keep because they are lifelong treasures. First we are going to go through the books I am currently reading. Nathan and I have been reading Making Sense of God by Timothy Keller for a couple months now. We've been reading it together, which we are not the best at, but if you are someone who has been questioning your relationship with God, has been transitioning from childhood Bible stories to college to adulthood, and you really want to understand how to become independent in your own thoughts and beliefs and what you want to know about God and not question about God, this book is amazing. And then personally, I am currently reading Where the Crawdads Sing. This has been on my to-read list for a long time, and I just got a copy a few weeks ago and I'm loving it. I'm about a quarter of the way through right now and it's awesome. Next, we're gonna go through Nathan's books just so I can go ahead and separate them out before I get diving into my own. Where in the world? Sorry, there was a motorcycle outside. One of my biggest pet peeves is the sound of loud engines. It drives me nuts. <laughs> So next up, we're going through Nathan's books. So I'm gonna go through the whole stacks and pull out Nathan's. I might not necessarily go through all of them, but I will show you the final pile once it's done. Why is it getting colder when the sun comes? 
anything that looks like this is Nathan's and it's the sweetest thing in the whole world. Nathan is also a giant movie fan and if you know him, you know that. Go check out his Letterboxd. It's Trust Falls. If you guys are on Letterboxd, you should be. It's basically like a social media app for movie watchers. My dad got Nathan this book for Christmas. It's ginormous and I normally use it as like a table, coffee table book because it's so big and I think it's such an interesting topic. But Nathan adores movies and so this book has been really fun for him to go through and check off things that he's seen or hasn't seen. I thought about having Nathan come on the channel to talk about like his favorite movies and my favorite movies and even just have a discussion about that because we both are big art fanatics and cinephiles and he knows more about movies than I think anyone I've ever met and he also talks about them so eloquently and beautifully so if you guys would be interested in that let me know and I'll tell him. Okay these are all of Nathan's books. They are a lot of books from his childhood or from college that he collected. We were both really involved in a Christian organization on our campus in college and so we have a ton of books that we read with like our Bible study groups or devotionals that we read. So some of those I know that he's read before, I just don't know if he wants to hold on to, so I'm gonna make sure that he can go through those himself and pick out what he wants to keep versus give away. Also, Nathan's grandmother loves to give us like really funny, I call them like back of the toilet books because that's where my grandmother always kept them, but fun books like by Jay Leno and things that you can just flip through whenever you're bored or you know on the toilet. And then for Christmas, Nathan's mom got him the entire A Song of Ice and Fire or the Game of Thrones series. And we both really want to read this, but I've heard it takes a really long time and it is a deep dive with lots of characters. So it's still in the packaging. We're not getting rid of it, but that's his too. And then also for some reason, we have like eight Bibles. I'm not gonna say for some reason, like I've been a Christian my whole life and Nathan is a pastor's kid, so it makes sense. So I'm gonna put those in Nathan's pile too so that we can go through them and pick. We each want to have one Bible and giving them away, honestly, being is a great idea because it can go to someone who really needs the word or at least just some encouragement. And then next we have got the giveaway pile. So these are books that either I did not enjoy or books that I honestly will never pick up ever again. Guys, this feels so good. <laughs> Oh. Okay. This is gonna be the hardest one for me and I know it because I love my books and I don't wanna get rid of any of them. <laughs> Again, sorry downstairs neighbors. Okay, these are the only books I am going to be straight up just giving away and donating probably back to Half Price Books. I read a lot of self-help books as a small business owner, and so there are some books like You Are a Badass and Purple Cow that I read in the last year and loved, but I probably will never read them again because I got a lot out of them. And I actually liked You Are a Badass at making money a lot more than I just liked the original. And then, like I said earlier, Nathan and I are in a lot of Bible studies and book studies, and this one is called Run with the Horses by Eugene H. Peterson. I read it in a Bible study last year, but I don't know if I'll ever reread it, um, and I think I'm gonna donate it. Also, books that I've already read, um, premarital and things like that, I'm gonna get rid of those. And then, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. We actually have a like master C.S. Lewis book that has like his best of the best, and there's already a Mere Christianity in there, so I'm gonna donate this one as well. And then, Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I bought this book like four years ago, and I was like, I love the title, this is supposed to be so beautiful, everyone loves it, but I'm gonna say it. I don't like F. Scott Fitzgerald. We read The Great Gatsby in high school, and I didn't love it. I loved the movie, but I just thought it was like so slow paced. I don't like his writing style. I started this book, I got three chapters in, and I honestly was like, I feel like I'm ripping my hair out trying to read this. So I'm sorry, F. Scott, I'm donating you. I'm really not sorry. Someone else loves you, it's just not me. Next up, we've got For Friends. These are gonna be books that I've picked out from my giveaway pile that I think certain friends of mine would absolutely love to read. Okay, when it comes to For Friends, two of these are books that Nathan and I read before we got married last November and we just had some best friends of ours who got engaged and so I think I'm definitely gonna loan these to them for now to read because they changed my perspective on marriage and I really want them to dive into that. And then one of my best friends is also a huge reader and I really, really think that she would love this book so I'm gonna loan that one to her. And I actually had a friend loan me this book a couple years ago and it really helped me learn more about minimalism and this was like Marie Kondo pre-Netflix so I might give this to a friend who was also struggling with stressful cleanup. Next we've got Keep For Now. These are books that either I just read and I'm still a little hyped about or I'm just not ready to part with yet but don't think that they are forevers. This is a book called Boundaries and Marriage. Boundaries by Cloud and Townsend. If you have not read it, it is an amazing book to help teach you emotional maturity and how to draw boundaries in your life to create very healthy relationships that you might not already have. And I really wanted to get Boundaries and Marriage right after Nathan and I got married because I can tell that I still have a lot of boundary issues, especially in relationships. Even though Nathan and I have been together for three years, I still feel like I have a lot to learn. I have opened my eyes to a lot of things in marriage where I can tell that I am ble we're bleeding into each other and I wanna know exactly where I am and he is. And so I started reading 
creating this, I honestly haven't picked it up because I've just been really busy. I say that and like we were just in a pandemic, but this was kind of heavy. I didn't want to read it during a pandemic. So I'm going to hold on to that one. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. This is another one that I've heard amazing things about. It's on a lot of lists that you should read before you die, but I can't tell if I'm going to love it yet from the descriptions that I've read. I might, I might not. I haven't read it yet, so I'm going to keep it until I read it. But if after I read it, I decide I want to get rid of it, no skin on my back. And then I've got these honkers here. So this is the complete artist's way. If you guys have never heard of the artist's way, it's basically this book and you can also get the workbook where it walks you through having a spiritual practice while being an artist and while creating. And I've heard amazing things about it. And I got it, I have price books for really cheap and I really wanna go through it, but I kinda wanna treat it like a class and go through it for like 12 weeks or something and really learn. So I haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna keep that one for now. And then like I said, I love to read a lot of self-help books and Dale Carnegie is this like renowned self-help author and this one is a combination of how to win friends and influence people and how to stop worrying and start living and I want to read both of those and like I said I got this from Half Price Books like I get all my books so I got it really cheap and I just threw it in and I know eventually I'll read this but when it comes to self-help I like to kind of have structure and read them before I start my work day I'll probably do the same with the artist's way treat it like a class I just haven't read it yet and then this book is funny it's called clothes 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 music 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 boys 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 by Viv Albertine and she was in the band she was in the band the slits like a rock and roll band and I honestly bought this book my senior year of high school because I thought it sounded kind of emo that is the Enneagram 4 and me I'm not gonna apologize and I've never read it but I think that it's like so emo looking and like existential and it's honestly like really pretty designed and it has beautiful photos and stuff in it and I even have like some dried flowers in here from high school I'm, like getting asked to prom or something and I have never read it I probably eventually will but it also just kind of feels like a piece of myself that was like so emo and existential in high school like very robbers by the 1975-esque and I don't know if I'll get rid of it because of it but for now I'm keeping it I'll probably go back through these books later and decide. And then The Devil Wears Prada. This has been on my reading list for a long time, but I just never have. And I can't tell if I'm gonna finish it and be obsessed with it and wanna keep it for a long time, or if I'll read it and be like, done. So for now, keeping that one. I have not read Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. I bought it a little while ago from Half Price Books and I know I wanna read it, so I'm gonna keep it for now. I can't tell if I'm gonna be in love with it and wanna keep it forever though. All the Bright Places I also have not read. I haven't seen the show. My sister just read it though and she loved it and so many people I know are obsessed with it. And I love like a John Green high school-esque story so I probably will fall in love with it I'll probably keep it forever but I don't know yet and then since I went to photography school and I went to art school I just have so many art books around the house like this one I think my dad got me and it's like the history and art and technique of photography and it has a lot of like really amazing photographers in here and their stories and it's really beautiful to just have like photography inspiration sitting around the house all the time so for now I'm gonna keep this one I haven't honestly really dived into it yet so maybe I'll commit to doing that more in the next couple months so so if you've gone through your giveaway pile or your keep for now pile, I encourage you to go back through your books as you're going through them and you might find more. You never know. I just did. So if you're anything like me, like me, you might. <laughs> I just got really sweaty trying to be funny. <laughs> Woo. And finally, we're gonna go through my Keep Forever books. Excuse the crinkly post, you know. I am very excited about this pile. These are books that I will absolutely read to my future kids. I will read over and over again in my life and that I am not ready to ever part from. And I'm gonna go through all of these because they are so important to me and I want you all to know which books are some of my favorites. A lot of these are just like world-renowned great novels, so I know why The Caged Bird Sings. Anything by John Steinbeck I keep because he is my favorite author. So I've got lots of his. Let's see. I've got Of Mice and Men, Tortilla Flat, Cannery Row, The Winter of Our Discontent, The Moon is Down, East of Eden, my favorite book of all time. And this honker, The Grapes of Wrath. Haven't read this one yet, but I know I'll keep it forever. And I mean, what else would I keep forever but these beautiful books? I am a avid Twilight freak. I love Twilight unapologetically. I love the movies. I love the books. Um, we can talk about it privately. I honestly will probably do an entire video one day about how much I love Twilight because it's embarrassing. So I will never get rid of those books. Don't at me. Don't try to change my mind. I'll never get rid of them. Sorry. I've started doing this a lot because Emma Chamberlain does and I love her. And besides Twilight, we will never get rid of our Harry Potter books. Our children will read these. I've collected them for so long and I actually wasn't allowed to read them growing up because they were wizardy and I don't know. 
I wasn't allowed to read them growing up, so I didn't read them for the first time until college, and they changed my life. They truly are the best story I have ever heard, the most beautiful character development, the most beautiful depiction of redemption and death and life and beauty and honesty and pain and light and darkness and best story I've ever read. We will never get rid of those. Our babies will read these one day. Kite Runner, this book is so beautiful. It's one of the best stories I've ever read depicting friendship and brotherhood. A must read. The Giver, <sighs> this book is so quick. I literally read it in one night before bed and I wept. It is so beautiful. I had no idea what to expect. Oh. It is so beautiful. It's one of my top five favorite books of all time. The Help by Captain Stockett. Another one of my top five favorite books. I read it for the first time last year. It changed my life. The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I will collect all of Donna Tartt's novels. I vow it. If you love John Green, but you're over the age of 21 and you want to get a little bit deeper, highly recommend The Secret History. It's very good. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I just finished this one. It is one of the most heartbreakingly beautiful novels I've ever read. It's breathtaking. I talked about it a little bit more in my last video about books, so go check that out. Out. Call Me By Your Name, Do You Not Already Know? The Lord of the Rings series, Never Leaving Our House. The Complete C.S. Lewis Signature Classics, This Is Mere Christianity, The Screw Tape Letters, The Great Divorce, The Problem of Pain, Miracles, A Grief Observed, The Abolition of Man. And all of those books are like renowned and C.S. Lewis is brilliant. And so we will keep this and my goal one day is to read this entire book. Another one of my all-time favorite books in this world is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I read this last summer with one of my best friends and I love Theo, the main character, so much. I love how much Donna Tartt like vilifies art and how beautiful and meaningful it is. Ugh, I love this book. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, just a classic. We will hold on to that one. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, another classic. The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Carr. I also have Milk and Honey somewhere. I think I loaned it to my sister a little while ago. I I always hold on to her books because if I'm in a very melodramatic mood, I can crawl in the bed on a rainy day, play some bony bear and read this and I'm good as new. <laughs> Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, another classic. And if you are looking for a book by a black author, this one is very, very beautiful. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. I would love to take a poem from this book called I Sing the Body Electric and turn it into some kind of tattoo idea concept one day. I absolutely love Walt Whitman. I don't think, I wouldn't consider myself like a huge poetry person, but Walt Whitman, wow. he. Wow. Yeah. He's great. Okay. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. There was a piece of gum in my book. Well, great. Still keeping it though. Water for Elephants. Just beautiful. I read this book my senior year of high school and it's great. I've never seen the movie. I know I want to. Love you, Rob Pat. I will watch it someday. I promise. And look how cute. The flowers I have pressed inside of it. They're for mine and Nathan's first date. I know. Okay, maybe I am a poetry person because I also have Love is a Dog from Hell by Charles Bukowski. He is a big, like, 1975 Maddie Healy is the lead singer. Bukowski is one of his favorite poets, and so one day I did go to a local bookstore and buy this while, um, you know, obsessing over the 1975 like I regularly do. So I grabbed this one. I've never read it yet, but one day, another all-time favorite, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. If you can't tell, I really, really love just, like, an emo existential story, and mm, this one's the best at it. It also smells like my dad's house. And then art books. I went to art school, so I do love art. And Renoir is one of my favorites. I thrifted this book a little while ago. Um, this painting that's actually on the back, my family used to have as a magnet on our fridge. I used to always look at this magnet on the fridge and think that it was a painting that someone made of my parents. That painting is really special to me and Renoir is just breathtaking. I'm a big impressionist fan and Renoir and Monet are some of my favorites that I'm actually named after Monet, if you didn't know. These are the only books that I will be keeping forever in my collection right now. And this is my keep forevers plus my keep for now books. I'm honestly really, really happy, really satisfied. This feels like books that I know I can grab, that I know I can reach for, and I don't just feel cluttered by. I feel like I really accomplished something today. It might not seem big, but it feels big. Um, never mind. This accomplishment might not seem very large. This is still a lot of books, but for me as a 23 year old who loves reading, this feels really, really good. I'm excited to put these up. So thank you all so much for tuning into my video today where I was breaking down my entire book collection and separating them. And I hope it encourages you to do the same. I highly encourage you to just declutter your house. It really will help clear your mind, clear your stress and clear your body of just any extra gunk. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like it. If you wanna see more videos, make sure that you subscribe. 
And if you want to be the first to know when I make new videos, make sure you click that notification bell. I'm also really hoping to do a closet clean out in the future, which will be a lot scarier than these books. <laughs> so stay tuned for that in the future. And as always, new videos are posted Mondays at 11. So that is when I will see you next. Bye. I was present, hopeless, praying, 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 praying. Okay. Struck down at 20, plenty left to fall behind you. Oh, you ain't paid, that was me. Now they speaking about you, leave it alone. Yeah. You aren't ready to see. Only few have ever been welcomed into the sanctum to see the books. The books know all. On the ball, I baby, don't make no mistakes. Got the faith. The 18 just like what we say. Been a few down generations, like what we invade. Why you gotta go? Why you gotta go? I just wanna know. I just wanna know now. True now. Try and get no, try and get no. Hope you free your soul. Hope you free your soul. I might have caught the June blues.